What is the first thing that you do in app development? You design user interfaces, right? After that, you worry about the logic behind and so on. But usually, when you start out designing your app, the first thing that you're supposed to do is start up Eclipse and then start hacking code on the screen? Absolutely not. The first thing that you need to do when you start developing an app is to take out a sheet of paper and a pen or a pencil and start drawing pictures of what your screens will look like and how you will transition from one screen to the other screen. The storyboarding of your app. That's the first point to start. And then from that, each one of those screens that you draw will suggest an activity that you're supposed to design in, in your application. Okay? And after that, it's a question of implementing each one of those activities. And then that will also suggest to you the background logic that needs to be implemented in order to fill the information on the screen. Okay? So that's why when you're designing your applications for the, for the course project, don't start hacking code in the first instance. Take a pa piece of paper and a pen or pencil and then draw pictures on the on, on, on the pen, pencil. Plan your app first. That's why the first stage of your submission for me is the initial app idea, which will be due at the end of this month. And then the second stage will be the proposal. In the proposal, I expect you to draw these user interfaces that you are going to use in your app and show me how you transition from one to the other and what is the reason why you design those user interfaces and so on. I, I need you to explain that first. Okay, so that will be the pro at the proposal stage. I want to explain to you how you're going to realize your app. And then I will see the completed app at the final product stage. Okay, um, I do realize that you need to submit um, team information I will activate the team registration system soon and then I will send you an email as soon as the system is ready and then you need to submit. You can start forming your teams right away, teams of two students. You can start forming your teams right away and then when the system is ready, I will ask you to submit the information. Okay? Uh, I was waiting until the ad drop period is over before I initialize the system. So it will be done over this uh, uh, next two days. Okay. Going back to user interfaces, this section, again, whenever I cover any part, I will also give you a pointer to where I draw this information from on the Android website. Similarly, uh, in the book also, there will be locations where you might find uh, things there uh, that you can read up. In case of Android, and for that matter, even in iOS also, the views, the screen views are all built up using things called views and view groups. This is a term that both, both of them use. What is a view? A view is a base class for widgets, things like text boxes, edit text boxes, buttons, and things like that that you put on the screen, images and so on that you put on the screen. All these constitute a simple view. And typically, a screen is composed of a bunch of view group, a group of views that are somehow interrelated to each other in order to create a screen. When you looked at the first example in the lab last week, you saw that there was this linear layout. And inside the linear layout, there was another linear layout. And when I had an image there, then I had a bunch of text, text uh, uh, text views there and then I had another image there on the screen and so on. So if you draw it out like a uh, like a tree, this is what your view will look like. What we call as the view hierarchy. We have individual views which are then grouped together using a view group and view groups with other views at the next level could be grouped together under another view group and you can actually have a much uh, larger level of hierarchy if you want. 
So whenever you design a screen, you need to plan out the structure first. Say, this is my topmost layout, relative layout, and inside my relative layout, I'm going to use a linear layout, and then I will use a linear layout with vertical positioning of things. I might use a frame layout, and inside my frame layout, I put things onto the screen where I want to position things and so on. So that's the reason why I tell you, first draw the picture on, on a piece of paper, and then subdivide it into how you are going to come up with this design using the view groups and so on, so that the thing is properly rendered on the screen. Okay? There are some standard suggested ways that you can create these uh, screens and so on. Some of them are very natural, like for example, if you need to present a, a list of items, there is something called a list view that makes it very easy to present things for users. There, are, uh, there is something called gallery view, which allows you to present a bunch of thumbnails on the screen. And so on. So, uh, Android does provide several different ways of designing user interfaces and several different uh, uh, methods of designing the user interface. There are examples on the Android website that you can look at. Uh, for the specific examples that we use in the lab, I will use only a subset of those different kinds of views that you can create, whatever is necessary for implementing my specific application. But you do realize that there are a whole bunch of other varieties of things that are available for you. Okay? And there are two ways of creating user interfaces. One, using the graphical layout on the screen, which is not as flexible as using the XML layout. Um, I would, I would uh, uh, suggest to you also to look at the XML version of the layouts on the screen. Don't be afraid of the XML layout. It's not that complicated. You can always design things in the XML layout and view it on the graphical layout. Some things that you design in the XML layout may not render properly in the graphical layout on Eclipse. In that case, run the app and see what it looks like on the screen. That's a better way of viewing things on the screen and so on. Okay? So, again, things like, for example, list view, you may not be able to see it clearly on the screen. But when you run the app, you will see better on the screen and so on. Now, obviously, you are painting something on the screen because you want to provide a method for the user to interact with your app. Right? You are not simply painting things on the screen just for the sake of painting things on the screen. Right? Of course, if you are just simply flipping through photos, then yes, it makes sense to you know, flip from one photo to another photo and so on. But even a photo flipping application will have some way for the user to interact. Like for example, when the user is looking at a photo and then wants to pause on the photo and look at it, maybe the user touches the screen with the thumb. This is the natural way that the user interacts. When the user touches the screen with the thumb, the slideshow will stop at that point until the user removes the thumb and then the slideshow can resume. Things like that. So. How do you allow the user to interact with the screens? And if the user does interact with the screens, how are you supposed to respond in that case? This is all done by using something called user interface events. You have to declare specific events for which you are going to respond when the user interacts with. So, like, for example, if the user touches the screen at this corner, this is what you're going to do. If the user touches the screen at, uh, at this little graphic on the screen, you're going to do this, and so on. So that's something that you need to get used to. Users' interactions with the views and widgets will generate events. This is where I will explain something called event-driven programming which is a slightly different way of writing applications compared to what you're used to. And, but essentially, for example, when the user uh, uh, brings up something on the screen, uh, let me show you as an example. Where's my screen here? Okay, uh, coming back to this screen, And the specific app that we are going to make use of, uh, the example that you're going to see tomorrow, there you see 
you have painted something on the screen, and you're waiting for the user to interact with this app. So how do you do that? Usually, you would suggest to the user, you might provide a button there, and then you expect the user to touch a button. In this particular case, wherever the user touches on the screen, I'm going to respond. So that's why I just put here saying, please click to continue. So if you click on the screen, if you click on the screen, then you immediately move to the next screen. Now here, depending on where you touch on the screen, the interaction will be different. So for example, if I touch at this point, I would be outputting things like contact information. If I touch on this point, for example, I will be outputting the timetable of the course. If I touch on this point, I'll output information about the course, and so on. Now, each one of these interactions at different locations leads to different events. When the user touches the contact information, obviously I need to recognize that the user is asking for contact information and I need to pop up the contact information on the screen. If I need to pop up the contact information on the screen, that must be supported by an activity in the background because activities are the ones that paint the screen. Okay? So that's something that I need to somehow design within my application, as you will see. So whenever the user interacts with the screen by touching on the screen or by using one of the buttons, every one of them leads to an event being generated. So every one of them leads to an event being generated. Okay? Now, if you want to respond to an event, you need to be able to define an event listener inside your activity and then register it with the view, saying if, if the user touches this view, this is how I'm going to handle it. If the user touches this particular view, this is how I'm going to handle it. I'm sure I'll show you, show you some examples in a short while. Things like, for example, the view class has a bunch of uh, listeners that are declared like on something listener, like for example, on click listener, on long click listener, on touch listener, and so on, which you will see later on in the, in, in, in the course and so on. Okay? Then you declare those, you will have to declare the corresponding listeners and then put in the information there so that when the event is passed on to your um, your uh, activity, you will handle it appropriately. 